Hello everyone, it's Oliver Harper here, and I'm back with Brad Watson. How are you well, doing? Well, hello there. How are you doing, Ollie? <laughs> I'm doing very well. You've been away for ages, haven't you? You've been in Mississippi. Yeah, I have been in, in the land of, of the United States, yes, yes, <laughs> doing some work, but... Uh, it's uh, and probably going back soon, but uh, so I thought I'd uh, take this opportunity to come in and uh, and uh, watch this movie with you because we uh, we need to. Yeah, we've had a lot of people uh, messaging me uh, asking when the Last Crusade commentary was happening, and as now as Brad is back, we can now finish off the trilogy. We I don't think we'll be doing number four anytime soon. It's um, not on my list. <laughs> it's not on my agenda. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Um, it doesn't exist. <laughs> Never heard of it. Yep. Um, okay, everyone, if you wish to sync the commentary with your own copy of The Last Crusade, skip past the TH Hex logo and press play now. There we go. The wonderful year of 1989, where we had, uh, it was mostly sequels. Which it was. Is, which is kind of a, a thing today, too, isn't it? Yeah. Although we had the first Batman as well. I just yes. want to say, this shot here, this was, as a kid, when I was in the cinema watching this, this was where I realised the hands of Spielberg were 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 strong in this one. Mm. Like as this as this beautiful, you know, craning shot comes over the ridge of this thing, I'm like, yes, yes, I'm <laughs> in the land of Spielberg here. <laughs> Brilliant. And then his name comes up there. Today, so. Well, this being, I, I think most people sort of believe that. Um, I think I said this a couple of times before. Um, Batman was the biggest film of 1989, but the most successful film. In box office wise, worldwide was the Last Crusade. Was that it really? Batman was the, yeah. the biggest movie, yeah, in, worldwide in the USA right. that year. Right, so, yes. But worldwide ticket sales were Indiana Jones slightly topped it by I think yeah. about thirty million. Um, so yeah, most yeah, successful people film. were people people were really ready for this. People I were looking forward to this. People were, yeah. I think, people were burned by the second one. They also has its yeah, idiots were burned by the second <laughs> one. But, <really. laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it, it was certainly a Marmite movie. I think it was people loved it, people hated it. I don't think people uh, hates an extreme word. I think <laughs> yeah. disappointed. Well, yeah, we've been we've been through all that. No doubt, we'll bring it up yeah. again. But and yeah. this, they also it was clear that Spielberg wanted to get back on track and bring it bring back the energy and uh, you know, the sort of the magic of the first movie. Yeah. Look at that shot. Come on. Oh, Look at that. It's beautiful. Stunning, isn't it? I mean, is, yeah. is this the same place where I shot yeah. Back to Future 3? Uh, yeah, it's Monument Valley, isn't it? Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, as then we've got the Nazis again. And I suppose you could, you could argue kind of similar sort of the script structurally is quite similar to Raiders with mm -hmm. sort of similar beats. Not as tight, though. Not as tight. I yeah I yeah. I would give you that because this is yeah. you know personally my favourite uh, indie movie uh, brands is Raiders is Raiders yeah, is, well yeah. Raiders is I I flip flop between Raiders and E T being my favourite movies ever made so there you go it, yeah so Raiders is the seminal and it's up there but but as I've said before um, I I actually do prefer Temple of Doom to this um, but that's just but that's not me slagging this film off it has its problems and its issues but but it's still Friggin' wonderful, you know. Mm. I love it. I love it. Don't get me wrong. And the interplay between Harrison Ford and Sean Connery is just—it's just electric. That's the highlight, I yeah. think, for me. And um, the obviously with this movie opening with uh, essentially a kind of a prologue, I suppose, uh, yeah, sort of setting up the backstory of Indiana mm. Jones and how he uh, got the scar, which is basically Harrison's own scar, and how he got the inspiration to dress like that guy. Well, this kind of yeah, like, this kind of started. I mean, we were talking about this earlier, but this. Tonally, it works for this film. It gets away with it, but it did start this obsession of uh, of going back into characters' past and explaining and showing all their how they became everything they are, and, and sort of conveniently have it all happen in one go. In in this in this, it it gets away with it because it's kind of part of the joke. Mm. It's kind of a joke that it's all happening in in this one adventure. Yeah, um, you know, you can almost you can almost think that this is just kind of like a summation of. Of of Indy's sort of young adventures all in one go, you know. Wouldn't it have been interesting if if Vic Armstrong could do some acting? We had the right voice well, and played this. Been, yeah, yes, that would that be would have been pretty, awesome. You know. So this character's called Fedora, but I believe I believe originally it was going to be Abner Ravenwood. Oh really? Yeah, I believe they wanted. So that, well, it, so that originally was, yeah. was going to be Abner. Yeah, ah, right, Who's, yeah. who has we you know those those of us really sad geeks know is uh, Marion's father from Razor Lost Ark. It is such a shame that River Phoenix died so young. Um, oh yeah, you know he would have. You know, I'm sure, I'm sure he would have gone to huge success, and, and I suppose similar, following a probably a similar path to Leonardo DiCaprio in that sort of regard, because they're both 
very yeah. good looking guys who yeah. were very good at acting and yeah um i'd yeah, like he, to think he'd probably be kind of you know the early johnny depp period he would he would have impressed like johnny mm. depp used to and i'm hoping that he would have just stayed the course a bit better. that's the one bit i love this is that's a harrison ford yeah. mannerism when yes. he grabs his oh he's looking if you watch river phoenix he's doing a lot of harrison ford mannerism scarf thing the way he's he's uh you know the way he's looking the way he's using his eyebrows and stuff it's all very Harrison Ford. I think he's actually very good. I really buy it. I really buy him as a young indie. Yeah, look, look he, that's a Harrison Ford smile. <laughs> you know? Was it because he he was chosen by Harrison, wasn't he? Because yeah. he was in the Mosquito. Yeah, Coast? he worked with him on Mosquito Coast, and he yeah. said to Spielberg, he said, "Look, if you want to find a kid that looked like me when I was a kid, this is the one." And he's also a, a bloody brilliant actor. Now look the way he runs. Yeah, he's like like bow legged. Well, it's, if you watch him, well, well, Harrison, you know, I think come like clear and present danger when he starts running, you think his yep. hips are a bit yeah. getting a bit oh, old. Yeah. I love the Harrison Ford run. I, I think it's I, fantastic. It's, 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 quite, so, it's quite easy to copy, actually. He's the most uncool run in the world, but which makes it so cool. <laughs> Thunderous run, yeah. you know. <laughs> I love this. What well, is it? Did, did you get into the Indiana Jones TV series where he's it's doing the World War One? You know what? Stuff. I didn't. I didn't. Not not for any reason other than it just. Well, I, I just it just passed me by a little bit. I, I I saw some episodes and and thought they were very good, um, and the production values were amazing. I think it was quite groundbreaking for for television production. It was very expensive TV yeah. shows, weren't they? That, that were yeah. made and ILM doing the visual effects. They had, I th- they had a number of directors. I think I think the was it Steve. Who was the chap who directed Captain America? Uh, Steve- Joe Johnson. Joe Johnson. He did, yeah. I think, a few episodes. Probably Frank Marshall, yeah. I imagine. Yeah. I know. Um, I think Terry Jones directed an episode. Really? Yeah. God. The, um... But I never really got into it. I never... I, I saw a couple of episodes. I I thought they were honestly a bit dull. Yeah. Yeah, um, probably. Like, I, I never paid much attention. But one has Harrison Ford in it. Yeah. Um, right, yes, it does. Yes, yeah. so it has him... Um, but I think it's because... It's because, okay, you can take the Indiana Jones and... And all that, but to me, Indiana Jones. To me, Spielberg is the primary force behind these movies. Mm. Like, and we, so Indiana Jones without Spielberg directing is d- doesn't interest me. It no. just doesn't because it's it because these movies are it's that his about sensibility craft. And, yeah, these uh, movies are about the craft of filmmaking. It's they they ooze with with the old school craft of filmmaking, and and that's what Spielberg was all about making these movies. It's interesting and, that each film gets more and more expensive, you know, yeah. the cost to, to, to make. Um, I always found it, as we kind of subtly mentioned the fourth one earlier, um, I mean, that costs huge amounts of money. Yeah, And this, this costs just under 50 million, yeah. which is, I think with each sequel, people get a bigger pay rise. Yeah. This is a bigger yeah. deal. They know it's going to make huge amounts of money. Yeah. They can demand but the whole film. point of the original one was that it was cheap. Yeah. That was I mean, the, the, yeah. Spielberg to prove that he can do something on time, on yeah. schedule, yeah. get it out cheap. I love that little musical cue. Yeah. Dun, 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 yeah. Oh, this is dun, great. Dun, yeah. This is a great, great, great score. Well, of course, this is, you know, 80s Williams. This is the point. Yeah. This is, this is still him sort of, you know, tapping into the golden era of him. Yeah. But I think come 80, like seven, like the Witches of Eastwick, his style was starting to change. Yeah. And that's what morphs into the Home Alone hook. Yeah. Kind yeah. Of style. Yeah. Well, I always say when you, you know, when, when you listen to the Harry Potter score, you, you're, to me, it's a, it's which is a Eastwick crossed with Hook. Yeah, definitely. And this is a classic stunt. A of a, you know, oh, call, they, callbacks to the old. They always do yeah. this. Yeah, it's great. I, I, but that's a great shot. I like the way he's just standing there. <laughs> I, I never saw this in the cinema. I, it was something. I don't. All I recall was just the, the old um, video game of Indiana Jones, okay. the Last Crusade, and uh, I found it. Insanely difficult and hard. This is sort of the platformy game. Um, there was a point and click adventure, which is very good. Right. Um, but yeah, that was my only sort of memory of it coming out. And it was all that year to me, it was just all about Batman. Right. Um, that's what I, kind of, I was aware of around me. Um, and it wasn't until we rented it uh, the following year. There we go. Goes the whip and then the scar, Harrison Ford's scar that he got in a car accident. Not, not by his first use of a whip, but you know, but that, but that's a fun, a fun thing. It's like, oh, we see him use his whip for the first time, and then we also find out how he does, does his scar. But linking those up as it, as it, that scar is the first time he ever used the whip. And I think, I think that's quite fun. I, yeah. Getting the idea for the hat yeah. and stuff, yeah, and the, exactly. And the get out, the, yeah. the, the, uh, the outfit. You know, yeah. it's, um, it, yeah, it, it, it gets away with it, but it's yeah. very like it's cheesy it's, and on yeah. the nose. Yeah, it's, yeah, like, it's right on the edge. It's right yeah. on the edge. But again. 
it's it's all part and parcel of the of the style of the films as well. The 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 tone that Spielberg creates in these things means that you can yeah, because be other, very filmy. You know, you can live in the in the in the movie universe of, of things and do stuff like this. Mm. Whereas that's where a lot of people get it wrong. They they'll do this stuff, but they'll do it you know in a serious way. And it's like, no, you can't do this seriously. You, this is you got to do this in a fun way. Yes. As soon as you start asking me to take it, take this kind of thing seriously, you, you, then then the verisimilitude is gone. I, yeah, Indiana Jones never had. I mean, Indy was, was kind of serious, but he had the sort of <coughs> the cheekiness to him. Yeah. But the the tone of it was, it, it, it did play it seriously, but it was, but it was never like so straight faced at all. No. And this and this, <coughs> that, that's no. the whole sort of charm of it. Is yeah. that sort of you know as we've said before, it's, it's homage to. Old school filmmaking. Yeah, and so the joy, serials. the joy of cinema is just all mm. over these movies. Is the fat kid and comes in the comes minute the with dog. the little trumpet thing? Is that Marcus? Isn't <clears throat> so it? So that's Indiana the dog, which is the, Lucas's dog. <laughs> <laughs> yep, <laughs> that was also the inspiration for Chewbacca. So Harrison Ford's got a lot to do with that dog, Junior. <laughs> I really wouldn't like to think that's Marcus. <laughs> yeah, because he, he seems like a totally different character. You know, yeah. He's a complete bumbling fool, and now he's yeah. like a you know, stiff up a Well, Marcus, is, Marcus yeah. is British. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, so it can't be. So whoever came up with that idea is an idiot. <laughs> wait, 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 wait till we, the internet kills me with... Uh, Spielberg said it. He confirmed it in an interview once. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm just talking yeah. bollocks. I don't know. Yeah. That's, that's, that's how... It shows that obviously they're not going to press charges, but it shows how honest he is. He goes, "Yeah, sure, here it is." Yeah, you know, he's not stole yeah. it for personal gain. Yeah, no, exactly. He's whereas these guys, these guys showing him that sometimes you got to just be a little bit underhanded to win. But yeah. the mutual respect that goes on here, yeah, it's brilliant. It's actually really, really good. Yeah, you know, you buy, it, you really do buy that this guy is Indy's inspiration. Mm. So you've got you've already been, had like two tunes introducing the score that are never going to appear again until you know after, after the prologue is finished. So you've got you've got themes actually three. You've got the Coronado Cross theme. You've got the White Hat White Hat Man theme, and you, and you've got the Young Indie theme. What? Oh, sorry. We don't yep. go back and say oh, it could have been Big yep. Armstrong. Yeah. Tom Selleck. Tom Selleck. It should have been Tom Selleck. <laughs> That I do love that cut. Though. Look, and the way he grins and then boosh, <laughs> he gets punched. That's amazing. That cuts like yeah. um. You're right. It could have been Tom Selleck. Yeah, that cut's so good, so perfect. It's like the 2001 cut with yeah. the bone. Oh, it's one of the, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's up there with the <laughs> it's, up there with it's up there with the Kubrick cut. The young <laughs> indie to to old indie, what middle aged indie. It's so good if he the thing he found was the clay from Kroll. I found it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> shared universe, folks. <laughs> <laughs> shared universe with Kroll. There we go. Look at this. So this is all on our sound stage. I I think it's Shepperton. I don't think I think then no, this was no, it's still Elstree. No, no, no. I know they shot most of the movie at Elstree, but mm. I think this set might have been at Shepperton. Okay. Yeah, because it's interesting. If people listening, if there's if you go on YouTube, there's a vid, a news report. I think by I think it's ITV or something like that um, from the late eighties, where Elstree's uh, basically being up. Yep. is up for sale and Spielberg yep. and Lucas are off. trying to stop it from being sold off mm. and um, you know he's Spielberg's wearing his Last Crusade hat I think it is mm. production hat and um, expressing his frustration about you know, you know this is the home of Indiana Jones this is the home where he makes his movies yep. but you know I've always, I have discussed this with my friend Tim it's like Spielberg and Lucas both had the money they could have bought that easily it's like pocket money to them and they could have owned it but didn't you know well, so you know don't complain, chaps, when you can easily afford to buy it yourself. <laughs> well, you know, investing in real estate is... Uh, I'm sure they, they might have thought about it. They probably took it on an advisement. Because Lucas did build a um, sound stage there. Yeah, that's guess. still there. That's still it, actually, yeah. the Lucas stage. That's right, yeah. Um, did he build that round time of Phantom Menace? No, 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 no. That, that was for? No, that was that was built... Was that during the 80s, then? Yeah, that yeah, was built okay. for, em- for Empire Strikes Back. Now, right, okay, sorry. Mm. Yeah, no, Phantom Menace was shot at uh, Leavesden. That's right. Yeah. Attack of the Clones did a couple of shots at Elstree. 
like the, the, yeah. the big but they uh, were mainly factory. yeah but they were mainly shot the the two the Tackle of Clones and Revenge of the Sith were shot mm. in Australia mainly mm. whereas yeah whereas Phantom Menace was shot at least and it was kind of the first it's like Goldeneye was Goldeneye shot, yeah but yeah. but gold but it but it wasn't actually a film studio then Goldeneye kind of used it and then and then they and then they started to convert it into a studio and I think Phantom Menace was oh, one nice. of the first ones to use it as a proper f- facility. I can't remember still. Do, do the girls still fancy Indiana? <laughs> well, of course they do. You know, come on, look at him. He's got grey hair now, so no. Yeah. Oh, they do. Yeah. No, yeah, of course they do. Of course they do. There you go. <laughs> X never ever marks a spot. Okay, right here. Here we go with a little bone and contention of mine with this movie, um, because Marcus is. Marcus here, mm-hmm. he's very much Marcus in all this stuff. But then, as soon as we go abroad, he turns into a buffoon. I I like the I like playing him for last. I like him being out of his element and all that. But he's, I think he's just a bit too buffoony mm. for me. Um, I, I yeah, I can understand your way of thinking there because it, it it's slightly out of his character, isn't it? What mm. we've seen with uh, Raiders, and it's good he's back in it now. Cause yeah. He, oh, it's one. Yeah. It's lovely that he's in it, yeah, and he's, he was the one person who was kind of in on what India was it up to. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like a sort of James Bond sort of thing, you know, mm. get his mission and goes off. Um, but I, but saying that, I do the comedy works so well, like it kind of gets a pass from me. Um, I just love it. Later on, when obviously uh, Sean Connery gets inside the tank, goes Marcus, he goes, ah! Yeah, ah. <laughs> but it, I think it's but it's moments like yeah, Henry, the pen, the pen is mightier than the sword. You know that, that, those sort of things. He, he's, he's almost like he's drunk. It's like Indiana Jones has not done. There's not marked any uh, yeah. essay papers or whatever. <laughs> look at but, that girl looking for at him. months. <laughs> he's he, yeah, sure he would have been reported. Wouldn't yeah, he? that's because he's not really a teacher. He's like a. Uh, he, he, makes, he makes enough money. Yeah, he yeah. makes he makes too much money for them with going around stealing artifacts. <laughs> <laughs> I was was it? When I told you the old story about Tolkien, where he uh, got so bored of marking these uh, exam papers, and then someone left a page blank. He goes, "Ah, oh, a b- b- blank page. I'll give this boy an A." <laughs> 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 Marvelous. That's wonderful. That is that shot there. Yes. Yep. Like, oh my yeah. god! Just surrounded, surrounded by, by uh, yeah. You know. And I love this. Oh, but I like. Okay, this is a great cut coming up here, where where he just where the guys surround him, and he just turns around, noticing that they're surrounding him, and then it just cuts to him turning around in Donovan's office. It's ah, it's yeah. it's it's friggin' amazing. Mm. And and then the exposition scene with Donovan, I think, is just wonderfully shot. Here we go. Like you said, when we did the Raiders commentary, you know, uh, Spielberg is so fucking good with the cinema scope. Oh, look, yeah. Okay, look, here we go. Turns and then boom. Yeah. Oh, I love it. That is good. Love it. This would be, I presume, Elstree now, you know. Yeah. And here he is. Old Julian, Julian Glover. Glover. Yeah, from uh, Empire Strikes he's, Back. He was in Empire Strikes Back. He was in um, uh, For Your Eyes Only. So he was a Bond That's villain. right, yeah. Oh, yeah, I saw him um, a few months back. He was at this comic convention just signing autographs and stuff. Yeah, because he was in Game of Thrones for quite a few seasons mm. as well. I love this moment here as well. It's, um, you know, it sets out the adventure yep. in a very... I mean, it's it's a simple... Uh, Direction here. I mean, well, he makes great use of you know yeah. setting um, or placing the camera in interesting yeah. places and yeah. to get this history of the tablet across to the audience. Um, but it's it's not boring. It, it's oh, no. um, you know he because Julian Glover's character right. and his passion for the Grail it sort of gets you enthused yep. to exactly. Go on you got adventure. you got two good actors mm-hmm. again. It's like you know it's like Raiders You've got good actors and amazing direction. The camera placement and movement is cinematic. But the but then the bit but the thing is is that it's it's all about the MacGuffin it's all about the MacGuffin and then right at the very end it becomes about the father yeah where he, where he says that, you know Al you know your father is the man who's disappeared and and that's amazing because you don't see Indy's face Indy's in the foreground and you just see his he's holding his hat and you just mm. see the hat drop very slightly mm. it's in it, oh, when that comes up I'm gonna 
you know, jizz all over that. Don't worry. <laughs> it's like, I just, you know, this Spielberg's just, he's, he, I don't know, he taps into what it is I love about cinema, he taps into, you know? So, mm. so I, you know, I just, there's no other way to explain it. It's, it's what it's, he makes, uh, it, it it all seems so effortless, yes. you know, so easy, but it's it's difficult to actually do what Spielberg does. Yeah, um, and oh, we yeah, see many films keep trying to copy him, copy yeah. him, and you know, seen with JJ Abrams with like Super Eight and mm. and um, things, like, things like National Treasure, you know, sort of try and well, capture that Indiana yeah. Jones vibe and Spielberg kind of sensibilities. And it, sometimes it kind of works, but it kind of it's missing an ingredient, um, mm. and you know, it's it's come from. Spielberg's kind of years and years of doing it and honing his craft and um yeah but I I love Spielberg stuff that doesn't deal with um like uh science fiction or action some of his his more kind of smaller films with like Tom Hanks like The Post yes, of course. um but, yeah. and Catch Me If You Can yeah. and um The yeah. Terminal I, I love Catch Me If You Can I, I love those and films. yeah and there's there's yeah and of course you've got You've got Shinder's List and yeah, Ryan course, and things yeah. like that, where where, and even though with Shinder's List, he he he's deliberately stripped himself of all the all the Hollywood um, sort of technical cranes and everything. Mm. You can he still stages it like like a master. You know, you're watching oh, yeah. you're watching the way you might be on a handheld camera, but it's still got this this magic to it. That that will always be his most important film. Yeah, I think yeah. Um, but in terms of Entertainment value, I suppose. It, you know, it's always going to be difficult because he's done so many good right. films, exactly. and everyone's got their own, you know, arguments to say. Maybe Close Encounters is his best, or Jaws. But mm. and I wouldn't argue against. No, that, I can't argue actually, against. But if your favourite film of his yeah. is Jaws or Close Encounters, because they're all good, I, I wouldn't you know? argue. Yeah, because Jaws is because they're. I love both those films immensely. Who's the chap who plays um, Hitler? Is it the guy? He's also in Star Wars. Yeah, Michael Sheed. Sheed. Um, I forget mm. his name, but he um, was he, he was, Grange yeah, Hill. He was yeah, he was Mr. Bronson in Grange Hill. That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which for those of a certain age and a certain nationality, he wasn't uh, the one was who a... gets um, was he the one who gets choked out in Empire. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Admiral Rosal. He goes, ah, Lord Vader. Yeah. Uh, we've just, uh, we've slowed down yeah. the fleet. Oh. And he gets. <laughs> Please just jump, jump out of light speed and we're preparing to you. Oh, you me for the last time. Admiral Ozzel. <laughs> He's as clumsy as he is stupid. Yeah. I well, I believe it's Julian Glover that tells him, that tells Vader that... that, that That's uh, right. That, yeah, yeah, that we've jumped out of light speed too close to the system. Here we go. Right, this is it. This is it. The hat... Just look. Come oh, on. Oh, yeah. And that's it. No cut to his face. Nothing. Just, oh, just the hat, hat dropped slightly. That's, that, that's showing us a so little bit of concern. Yeah. You know. <laughs> I love how they close the curtains. We'll just hide this mess. Yeah, yeah, yes. It will fall everywhere. <laughs> I think this is kind of like you know when Indy's in Raiders where he's packing his suitcase and his Marcus comes in tells him about the yep. uh the arc. Yep. That's a, Which is a, that is a his, masterful one of his, scene. Yeah, one masterful scene mm. and uh he does a wonderful job doing it. And this is kind of a similar moment, I suppose, you know, it's uh but it's actually more cuts in this one, it's not just one take. Yeah, it's not the one take yeah. the one of that. I think probably Spielberg had more time on this one, didn't he? Yeah. Didn't have to prove anything to Paramount. <laughs> no, exactly. It's, such, it's so annoying that, you know, that we never got another Indiana Jones during the mid-90s because that would have been the perfect yeah. time for it. But then, you know, Spielberg, he's, you know, his schedule was just chock full of other yeah. stuff. And <clears> so <throat> was Harrison, you know, yeah. doing all these kind of... Was it, were, were but, they, they Tom Clancy novels or were they... The, pa- the Patriot Games or was that it, someone else? The uh, the, the uh, clear and present danger. The uh, um, oh, what's the Jack Ryan? That's it. Yeah, sorry, is, is the character. But the yeah. um, yeah. But I, but also Spielberg didn't want to do anymore. 
Mm. He was done after this one. Because as a kid, you know, even though uh, it says The Last Crusade, which is about the Crusades finding the ground, it also it subtly says in the title, it's The Last Crusade for Indiana Jones. Yeah. The last adventure. Yeah. That's what, to me, that's what, imp- yep. to me as a kid, that's what I thought that Absolutely. That, that's and that's why, that's why it all, that's why it neatly wraps up as the ending and anything else that comes after, I'm happy to, you know, take or leave. Leave mostly, but, <laughs> but um, but that's, yeah, but again, there's still there's still stuff in Crystal Skulls that that is Spielberg doing 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 his thing, you know, and there's still plenty of things in there to enjoy. Oh, we see the uh, Doctor Schneider. Yep, Alice uh, Alice and Doody. And, uh, she and was she, she's stunning else, in she, this film. She's absolutely yeah, beautiful. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Indy's already kind of smitten when he sees her, yep. you know. Yeah, straight away. She was I mean, she could have been a Bond girl, you know. Well, she was in A View to a Kill. That's right. Yeah. This was just one she, of those... But she was, yeah, she was one of the jodhpur-wearing henchmen women. That's right, yeah. I, yeah, I thought to myself, maybe yeah, she was. She, she but... comes out and greets Roger Moore when he arrives at the mansion. Oh, okay. she's in... Oh, my God, she's in Taffin. With Pierce Brosnan. <laughs> Maybe you should have been living here. This is, she's in that film. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Venice. My dad went to Venice. They want my parents won. My mum went to when she was pregnant with my younger twin sisters. The uh, they went. To, they won tickets to go to Venice, and it's like eighty four, eighty four, I think something like that. My mm. dad goes, place bloody stank, you know, really smelly, <laughs> really expensive. This is back in the eighties as well. My dad, mm. you know, at that point wasn't, you know, he wasn't hard up or anything. He was doing quite well financially, being an architect. And uh, but yeah, to him, it was like it's a bloody rip off, <laughs> and it's and it's water everywhere. <laughs> yeah, and it stinks. <laughs> so, and it's still, you know, very expensive place to go for, you know, to sort of, you know, holiday. Mm. But I still like to go actually. Just, just yeah, I've never been. I've know, never been to Venice. I'd love you know, to go. It's a city on water. Not this look. He starts, he, he's already got a flower out for her. <laughs> See that? So I like Marcus there, where he's because they start they start banging on about the flower. Yeah, and he's like, I hate to interrupt you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's like Jeeves asking, mm. you know. He's got the sort of butler hat. Yeah. He, you know. Because he played a great butler in uh, Trading Places. God, yes. Yeah, he's great. I love him in Trading he's Places. He's really good, yeah. See, these are the stuff I love about Indiana Jones. Uh, you know, it's him trying to solve the little puzzles, which is a kind of obvious... Everyone's seen, you know, obviously, in, in this film... Mm. Everyone stood around it. They they can they've seen the patterns on the floor, but not connected them together. And it's him with those sort of uh, little uh, bits of information from his father that help him link everything oh. to get underground. And it's when he when he smashes the floor in cue with the librarian who yeah. stamps the books. Like, boom. <laughs> which, which yeah, it's a little bit extreme. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Did you see us uh, at the Odeon? Uh, Leicester Square was it no oh, no 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 this was this was back in my Canon oh the Canon Basil oh, the, oh, the flea pit there yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah which I did find didn't I I found yeah. it I found a picture of it you for did you. yeah I was like man that is a flea yeah. pit <laughs> <laughs> got a lot of brand queuing up for actually you weren't even little there got, <laughs> a, got, a, got a lot of good memories of that of that flea pit thank you very much <laughs> <laughs> I mean it was rubbish but but to a kid you know it was my it's where I I got introduced to movies. Because the trailer, isn't it, for this film? Or maybe it's the teaser. It's like, The Last Crusade is now in production or something. You know, mm. and it shows you them filming it. And it's yeah, it always start, I think it started with a with a plane, like on a long lens plane coming down. And as as the camera panned down with it, or tilted down with this plane as it's like coming into land, the whole crew came into the foreground. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like, yeah. Indiana Jones and The Last it's Crusade. It's a strange tease, and isn't it? it? And it yeah, and it was like, that? and I think it's when, when he... He uh, and you see Harrison Ford stapling his hat to his head. That's right. Yeah, that'll do it. 
Yeah, because I remember when I did the review of this film, it's like a lot of the behind the scenes material did seem to be shot on sixteen millimeter, which is generally the case. Mm. But because that teaser was in thirty five millimeter, you get oh, you get better resolution yeah, of these yeah. behind the scenes uh, yeah. sequences. <laughs> it's got. I, I do like that the X marks the spot thing, but I, I I remember the very first clip of the of it I saw. So obviously I'm I'm of a certain age now where where I know it's coming. And I'm very excited. Mm. They're doing another Indiana Jones film, and um, yeah, this is okay. Yeah, I'm not sure about this. It like, kind of looks like Einstein, doesn't it? <laughs> he does exactly like, which I'm, which I'm pretty sure is why he got the gig. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's like really because <laughs> with with everything on TV when they showed uh, clips of this film, it would mm. often be the the moment where he's tied up. With his father, yeah, they showed and trying that. to escape. But for me, it was the, the very first clip I saw. And I remember I was around, I was in my parents' caravan, and it was on. And it came on TV. You know, the new Indiana Jones films had blah blah blah, and it was and it's basically was was uh, Harrison Ford and Sean Connery, and Sean Connery goes, "Gosh, those those men are trying to kill us." It's like, I know, Dad. <laughs> like, well, it's a new experience for me. It happens to me all the time, <laughs> like that. And I and I was just like, "Oh my God, yes! Oh my God, yes!" <laughs> James Bond's in yes. it. I was just like, oh. But the very first, the very first thing I knew about the film was I think I was telling you. Did I tell you this yesterday, or who, who was I, I telling you? Maybe where, where I was, where basically it was in Photoplay magazine, and it was a picture of Alexi Sale, and he and he said Alexi yes. Sale is in the new Indiana Jones film. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> And he, and he does turns up in one scene as the king of Jordan. That's right. Yeah, because he, he wants those vehicles, yeah. doesn't he? Yeah. yeah. In in exchange. Just look behind you, Marcus. So yeah, so this is great. I love I love the this set. Oh, it's really good. Yeah. This is um, this is obviously the one thing. Oh, this uh, is cool. Uh, as well. This is the little Indiana Jones Ark of the Covenant. Are you sure? Pretty sure. Yeah. And Williams quotes his Ark thing. This is uh, well, Indiana Jones is not scared of rats. Mm. <laughs> yeah. they, they say he's scared of one thing, isn't it? Snakes. Yeah. Snakes. The, the snake. uh, but I think these are a lot of real rats, didn't they? Yeah. Um, well, they bred them. They bred them especially. God, because yeah, because you the only way you can really the train rats screams is, and stuff. Are, I think it's definitely genuine. Yeah, you know. Yeah, there's that moment. Yeah, where they, where they're when they're under the when they're in the water under the under the coffin, and one of them gets caught in her hair. That's that's a real. Yeah, she's really screaming. I always love the sort of behind the scenes stuff of a view to a kill when you've got um, Grace Jones getting put you know, to, with Rod, with Roger Moore going through underwater, you know, sort of walking through all that water, and the sparks are going off, and Grace mm. Jones is terrified. Yeah. So, so this water is all is all flammable. I think. Yeah, it's it's, uh, it's actually petroleum or or whatever. I mean, this is like you know, this is this is yeah. perfect, this is like proper tomb raiding. This is classic. Isn't it? This yeah. is proper well, you've classic. Got like, you've yeah, got like a bit of wo- you've got bone. Obviously, it's a bone. Like, yeah, it's a, a femur through, bone. <laughs> walking <laughs> through these little yeah. kind of tombs with a uh, torch. Yep, and then all the rats, and Harrison Ford. Had no problem with rats because he used to, I think he used to breed them when he was young. Really? Yeah. Well, he had them as pets. Uh, I suppose just, I just, yeah. To me, I just see him as like just, um, just big hamsters. Yeah, big hamsters. You know. I think you, you, what you'd be thinking of in that situation is disease, not not necessarily. Yes, yeah, true. Yeah. True, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> But I'll be more concerned just, just stepping on them and hitting, you know, hurt, killing them. You know, that, yeah, that'll be my sort of worries, I suppose. Do you let them? Nope. Oh, <laughs> oh god, uh, it will just fall out. Yeah, it's like I love when you listen to Spielberg talk about this. He's 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 got such a gleeful 
grin on his face when oh. he talks about the the torture he put yeah. he puts his leading ladies through in these movies. It's, it's him just torturing just his sisters, literally, again, yeah, isn't it? literally yeah. throwing stuff at her face. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, because he used to love torturing his sisters. Well, funnily enough, he he turned down directing his sister's movie. Really? Uh, to uh, to do this, yeah, big big. Oh, that's right. Mm. Yeah, he turned down big. I know he t- he t- yeah. had to turn and, down and Rain, Rain Man. Man. Yeah, because um, because of the pre-production on this yeah. and the planning of it. I mean, Rain Man still turned out to be a brilliant film. Oh, so I big. love Rain Man. Yeah. So it's um, yeah, they're both great. Yeah. I need to watch Rain Man again, actually. Yeah, I watched it not that long ago on a plane flight. I was like, you know what? I haven't seen Rain Man for ages. <laughs> And you have that wonderful experience when you go back to a movie that you haven't seen for ages, but then when you start watching it, you remember everything. Mm. And you remember all the lines coming up. And, yeah, you know, yeah. Because it's, it's, it, it's, it's ingrained in my brain somewhere. It's just that moment for me, it was always stuck in my memory, was when he, um, it's, he put something in the oven on microwave <laughs> yeah. and it starts smoking or something yeah, like that. Yeah, and the, the, the alarm upset. goes off. Yeah. 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 I love that. Yeah. We find out she slept with his father. Yeah. And uh, goes, she goes, she talks in her sleep. She talks in her sleep. She talks in her sleep. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh. But, oh. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I believe Sean Connery improvised that. Oh, it, doesn't, it doesn't surprise me because yeah. he was quite good at ad libbing stuff. Yeah. And then, and I think Spielberg went, well, so now that's a subplot. <laughs> So they're all mechanical rats being burnt up. No real ha- ha- uh, hamsters were were harmed in this movie. <laughs> See, I lo- okay, I love this. Look, the way the fire comes in here is, is this is real old school stuff. The way that and then it comes in in the foreground. Oh, I love yeah. that. I love it. <laughs> hamsters. Yeah, rats don't look like rats on film. They have to use yeah. hamsters and yeah. paint them black. <laughs> Spray paint. Spray paint them. Yeah. Yeah, so I think yeah, so they I think this is the the rat that gets caught in her hair. And she's like, ah, oh, <laughs> yeah, give us a kiss, love. Yeah, and she's really, uh, she's really, she, she's really not happy in that moment. Oh God, I don't know, I, I, I couldn't do that. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm a terrible swimmer. <laughs> Save me, please. <laughs> she's great. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> see that see that oh, that, that stuff I love I love that humour this is I love this score I love this this, this no, action cue yeah, with uh, oh, with Williams really I mean as we, when, when, when the albums come out you're always missing quite a few tracks because I can't fit the whole look, watch this watch this jump look, 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 we, we stay in this one shot yeah. and they'll go and then this guy he, he, and he makes it I love yeah. it it's yeah. brilliant good timing isn't yeah. it the, um, but Williams' albums, you know, they're always, you could, from start to finish, they're always kind of enjoyable listening experience. It didn't feel, some tracks felt like, oh, I'm going to skip this one. They've always kind yeah. of worked very well. Um, yeah. No, no, I loved it. I mean, yeah, I listened to this soundtrack so much. Did you buy us an LP think, at the time? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this but, is, oh, this is Blakely, this is England, isn't it? This bit here. It's like <laughs> oh, the Thames, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. The, yeah, it's uh, uh, down, down Tilbury Docks, isn't, isn't yeah, it? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, on the uh, yeah down in East London, but um, yeah, it's great. But what? But I remember you know watching this and enjoying it. And that, but it's when it then cuts to the to the to the heading towards the big propeller, and the and the score just goes dun 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 dun. And I was just sitting in the cinema going, yes, come on, this is what I want. This is exactly what I came here for. I love it, yeah, because I love how the ships get too, get to get, the whole space gets too narrow, and they have to end up ex, ex, yeah. it explodes as it yeah. goes through. You know, <laughs> it just, it just it's blows filled up. with TNT or yeah. something. You know, <laughs> these blokes had a lot of you know explosive <laughs> wind. Whoa, look at that, that is awesome. just, yeah, so good. It's great. It makes no sense, but yeah. it's great. Exactly. Yeah, that's de- those are different. Those yeah, those those uh, cranes are definitely uh, not in Venice. <laughs> 
This also seems like the same bit where they've shot like. Um, Does it? Do- I don't actually. For your eyes only. It might be um, the opening shot with a helicopter, right. isn't it? It could be. I'm yeah. not sure where they shot that. I think this. I don't think this is a Tilbury. Actually. I think it's a bit further into London. I think it's mm. more. It's near near the more near the Isle of Dogs. That that sort of area. But mm. here we go. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and just the way the shots are constructed. You know, you cut to the wide, come in, boom, 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 and then you keep, then you cut out again, and you know, it's just, you know, this is this is yeah, look. So that. Do so that, that yeah. So that that boat is on is on a track. This is this was at Elstree, so they they built this whole thing. Yeah, look this, the, look this shot, this shot here. Look, we just hold on this up. shot, and we just crane down as the boat's getting eaten. That's great, isn't it? Yeah, look, yeah, I love it. Come God, on, that would probably make the actor's job. Yeah, that. whoa, yeah. that's getting whoa. too close. Yeah. <laughs> But then I do a lot of this stuff on long lenses, so it all looks closer to them. That's right, yeah. Classic technique. I always love this. Like, you just have this intense chase and almost fight to the death, and then they just like let him go. Yeah, 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 yeah. See ya. <laughs> it's this communication, people. Mm. Yeah, if he just, just told him before, he just so he told came us. and started clubbing yeah. them out, knocking them out, and yeah. trying to kill him. Mm-hmm. But because you know this character was kind of you know introduced as, as essentially a kind of a villain, isn't he? But then once he reveals who he is and he protects the yeah. Grail, I, 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 you know, when he gets shot later on and killed, I was like, no, yeah, yeah. He, was a, he was a good character. Yeah, um, yeah, you would have liked to have seen him in further adventures. Mm. That's been the whole thing, isn't it, from the beginning? Because the his father's after the Grail for his own, you know, to to solve his own the own the mystery for himself. Where yeah. Indy's not interested in it. No, he just wants to get his father back. Yeah. And this is the I think the argument wasn't it between Lucas and Spielberg creatively was that like Lucas wanted to focus more on the on the Holy Grail. Yeah. And Spielberg wasn't really interested in that. He wanted to the father-son relationship because he's we know that great documentary about Spielberg where yep. the, the difficulty w- with him growing up and his father mother them divorcing isn't it are they, yep. do they divorce or they yep. separated yeah no they, they divorced yeah, yeah. Um, yeah no, and, and he blamed him and his dad didn't, didn't on, talk did yeah no. but this is this was kind of the reconciliation mm. because um I mean, the early scripts for this film were were sort of penned by um, Chris Columbus, who had worked with Spielberg on. Well, Spielberg had produced uh, the Goonies and Gremlins, yeah. Yeah. and I think Chris Columbus had didn't he have a role uh, write Did he write the Young Sherlock Holmes? Yes, he did write yeah. Young Sherlock Holmes, and which I think is a very underrated movie. Oh, it's good. It's I, good. I really and enjoy that. Yeah, I think most people remember it because yeah. of early CGI. Isn't yes, it? Um, that was the night, isn't it, in that church? Mm. The Chris Columbus's I think early ideas was like he was supposed to be set in Africa and had like dealing with his cannibals and this monkey king and uh, I think I think they obviously disbanded that idea because of this sort of in, in bad taste um, and I think it was and then also there's one element I think where Indiana is battling a ghost so they had these kind of weird fantasy elements because in the making of of this movie that's later on when they did the DVDs and the retrospective looking back on it and as Lucas said about a haunted house or castle yeah. Yeah. Um, and it, to me it was that showed the different ideas of what Spielberg and Lucas thought of Indiana Jones where Lucas was kind of pushing it pushing it essentially more into fantasy yeah. elements and yeah. um, With Indiana Jones dealing with the ghosts and stuff, it doesn't quite work. No. But even though this, you have a knight in it who's been living for over a thousand well, years. Well, the thing is, is the, and again, I guess, I guess it's, it's borderline. It, it, I guess it's where kind of um, Crystal Skulls kind of crosses the line a bit for a mm. lot of people. Is the, the sort of the fantastical elements are in the background and they, and then they, and then they sort of, they sort of come in and, and save the day or, or whatever at the end, but it, but it's, but it, but right up until that happens, it's never like on the nose as to whether the supernatural elements are true or not. It's mm. you know it's all more legend. It's more this, that, and the other. And um, 
and then it just feels much more old school to to have it be supernatural elements rather than sci-fi elements mm. which you know again we could go on about what lucas wanted to do with uh, crystal skulls because you know and i and i get that totally but it just didn't fit no Whereas this this stuff is you know it's this, this sort of rough god it, type stuff is much more the alien fitting. stuff. Sorry, we're going into crystal, yep. kingdom of crystal skull discussion now. But the alien stuff fits with the B movie fifties. No, exactly. That's why I say I, I get it. I get, get what it. he was doing. I but get I think what he was doing. How far you go with? But that it's and, like um, yeah. But it's like this. Yeah. This isn't. You know, Indiana Jones is born of the thirties serials, not mm. not the fifties sci fi B movies. So if you're gonna do a homage to those things, you need to kind of invent another character to do it with. I do love, I do, I do love, I love that bit. Yeah, oh, Venice. <laughs> yeah. I always remember getting really excited when when this first flash of lightning appears on the screen, and I'm like, "Yes, I am." <laughs> I was, I was. This was, this was why in the period where I was so geeky about industrial light and magic. I knew who all the supervisors were. I knew it, look, look, and I was like, "Yes, <laughs> here we go." And obviously, we're going to we're probably going to talk about the effects of this movie. And oh, sure, sure. Uh, I mean, it, to me, it was always as a kid when I watched those uh, sort of making or movie magic shows, whatever. Mm. I, the, the, the always the one name that popped up to me was was Dennis Muren. Yep. You know, because um, he was, I think, at this later eighties part, he was becoming more and more the face of the sort of the head of ILM. Yeah, he was the, the yeah he the was main the main he was the main you know? he was the head honcho. By this time, for yeah, sure. Because when you saw a T2 making of or Jurassic Park, Dennis was there. Yeah. Um, but then there's other great names, like D- Douglas Trumbull, you know, who was sort of, I think, to me, was just... Well, Trumbull was... things like yeah. you know, Blade Runner and stuff, but that was, yeah. you, you know, years before. You yeah. Know, uh, and then Trumbull kind of wanted to move more into directing stuff and mm, creating like stuff, with, more like that. And and he, and he, he, did, he directed the Back to the Future ride, the greatest ride on the planet ever that's ever happened ever. In the history of world ever, which is now gone, isn't it? Yep, yeah. which is now in the past. But um, yeah. So, but I think this was one of this was Mike, Michael J. McAllister was the supervisor on this, and it was one of his first because Dennis efforts. was doing Back to Future Two, Dennis or was doing Ghostbusters Two. Dennis Miller was doing Ghostbusters Two um, and The Abyss. Oh, the Abyss, that's right. Yeah, I yes. Keep, keep which they, the, which is what they won the Oscar for. Keep forgetting The Abyss. Yeah, because I remember thinking that Back to the Future Two was going to win the Oscar for effects, like like no, like it was hands down. But did you see the? And Abyss I hadn't seen time. no, I hadn't seen the yeah, Abyss, yeah. and then the Abyss won, and I was like, what, like it wasn't, who, it who wasn't, is this it Abyss? Was, yeah, yeah, what yeah. is this? And then I saw it, it and I was like, okay, there it wasn't you go. Successful, that's the problem. No, well, the that, Abyss wasn't. Yeah, much of a but I I love the Abyss. I absolutely love it. Are you theatrical or extended cut guy? The ex- extended cut. Mm. It's coming out this year, apparently. Is it? What, the Blu-ray? 4K remaster. Oh, thank Christ. <laughs> yeah. well, I, did, I, did, I did quite like it. It was on Twitter. I think was it Ryan Johnson and Ryan Gosling, I think something like that. Someone had tweet tagged James Cameron saying, hey, I can't find True Lies or The Abyss on uh, yeah. Netflix. Because, yeah. because I'm working on it, guys. All right. <laughs> yeah, okay, it's, cool, it's good. Ah, uh, and True Lies, yes. Yeah. I love True Lies. Yeah. But anyway, so back to Indiana Jones. Of course. <laughs> this is... Um, oh, he smashes him over the head with that vase. This, okay. It's a fake. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, thank God. <laughs> it's, yeah, this is... Okay, this is brilliant. This introduction of Sean Connery is amazing. Because this comes right out of the shadow, yeah, doesn't he? Yeah. Junior! Yeah, junior! <laughs> and, and you buy it. He's 12 years older than him. Yes, man. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Like, <laughs> the shadow bash, and then <laughs> here we go. <laughs> oh yes, sir. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Don't call me that, Dad. Yeah. Please. <laughs> okay. And this is so. Th- this is where you know. This is where the film, the movie, really gives us something that we've not seen before. This is where it, it becomes its own thing. This just these two guys playing off each other. It is wonderful. No, oh, it breaks the heart. <laughs> I'll never forgive myself. There is a full space. No. 
I love how he just like doesn't care. He just like yeah. throws it away. He's not. Yeah, not he's thinking. Give it... Shall I make any noise? Yeah, you know, yeah. Just... He's just like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good, I love but, yeah, Sean's, Sean's only what ten years older than four. Twelve years, I believe. Oh, 12, it was, yeah. Was it? yeah, yeah. But I buy it. But you buy I it. I totally buy you it. Yeah. yeah. This is come on. This is this is kind of yeah, you know, your last era of of your of your two two great movie stars who are great actors, mm. great character actors who are movie stars as well. Just just playing off each other. But they both as well, come the 90s, still went on to have really good careers. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, they, they, absolutely, yeah. Sean Connery made some better choices, I think, during the 90s period where um, the 80s... Well, had no, this... no, ben, no, because he didn't do anything better than Zardoz, surely. <laughs> <laughs> where he wore wafts of Where, where he wore nappy, a nappy for the whole movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I think his first sort of blunder come the nineties was Highlander two, but yeah, yeah. But I think he did that. Yeah. He did that for purely the money. for the holiday and money. Yeah. Not yeah, not not as in he wanted the money, but I think he, I think it was another one where he gave it all to charity or gave it all to something. Okay, this is this is wonderful when they come in and they both talk at the same time. You know, Doctor Jones, yes, is <laughs> like we come for the book, what book? <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Who are you? Oh, Harrison Ford's a master at, at, at it, the facial expressions, oh, the yeah. awkward, the awkward smiling. He's so good at it. Ah, oh, so it was good yeah. when yeah. Jared Jones mows down people with yep. guns. <laughs> yeah, don't call me Junior. Here we go. That's what you <laughs> did. <laughs> <laughs> I love how his father is 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 has not been aware at all of what Indiana Jones gets up to. Yeah. Um, look at look. I love the way he's shot with the shadows. This is look the way this is lit. Look, the shadows of, of Indy and... The, uh, <laughs> I'm going to kill her. Yeah, go yeah. ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. The one time he doesn't listen to his father. <laughs> See, I, I think this is great. I think she's a really good character. Oh, she's great. Yeah. And I, and I think you, you, I think, I think you, the, you really feel betrayed as the audience at this moment. Mm. But it's it's um, because in the other two, there they were. It was clear cut that they were good. The women, the, the, the yeah. love interest, the women were yeah. were good characters. Yeah. They they were they weren't evil. In number two, obviously, she's obsessed with you know fame and fortune. Yeah. You know? um, this one we've got this one a where, great conflict you know, where, yeah. but she's kind of set up as the love interest. But then then she at this moment backs away. She's mm. no longer the love interest, and yeah. really the real love interest is his dad. Yeah. Which she's a full-on obsessed Nazi. Mm. You know. There is a point, isn't there, near the end where she has doubt, isn't there? Well, she, yeah, you you get the impression that she she's more of a mercenary, really, and she's. Mm. Here we go, Harrison Ford's face. <laughs> <laughs> she talks you to sleep. <laughs> the little grin he gives. <laughs> <laughs> The Glover. Yeah. yeah. Donovan. <laughs> I, I love Jason all this stuff. Jason Donovan. The, you know, the, the tracking in, the jibbing shots, everything, you know, just as as he's realising he's being set up and he's been portrayed. I also love this, how everything with Spielberg is just like, let's fuck over the TV cut, pan and scanning. 
Oh, yeah. Actors Absolutely. on the far left and far right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is for the cinema, folks. This was the film that, that Spielberg was really pushing Paramount to put in put out in widescreen. And yeah. they wouldn't mm. in for VHS. So it was only the laser disc that came in widescreen at the time. Yeah. Um, that kind of stuck that way till probably, I think, maybe 93, 94, something like that, when they mm. did the old remaster. Well, did, uh, the last time you could buy the Star Wars films and they THX remastered whatever it was in the theatrical cuts. I think maybe the Indiana Jones ones came out around the same time or maybe a year or two later. But Yeah. the first, Well, the, the Star Wars trilogy was the first films I saw come out in widescreen mm. followed by Close Encounters. Right. I also go down the rabbit hole on YouTube to try and find these old commercials and you find there's like the Fox collection where it's got like mm. aliens die hard in widescreen. Yeah. Um, now in widescreen. Here we go. All right, and this is where. See, I've I've enjoyed I've enjoyed Marcus right up to the to this point. He in Venice, he's he's still he's a little he he feels a little bit out of his element, but he's still mm. kind of a smart guy. But then now suddenly he's a buffoon <laughs> with, with a, oh, with a chicken right. feather stuck on his face. But then of course we have Salah, obviously, who I again I think becomes a little bit too buffoony in this. In Raiders, he was much more of a competent. He was he, he was. Well, he, you know, he had a little bit of the com- comedy to him. He's like, Argh! yeah, oh he yeah, yeah, the exactly. Same, you know, but, but the thing um, is, I think, but that, but that, something like that was so funny because he's actually kind of a competent guy, yeah. and he just gets caught off guard by that. Goes, this, yeah, he's this one. He's he's another sort of just a lovable yeah. sort of bubbly character, yeah. isn't he? Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. Named it's after a, you know, the it, dog. it doesn't it doesn't offend me too much, you know, because I still love this film. I do, mm. but it, but I, but these are the reasons why I don't. It doesn't quite hold as well for me, but. But I still love it. I still love it. Come on. You know, and this is quite a nice callback to Raiders where they where the Nazis do it's the, the trickery. Yeah, yeah, do the do the, the do the reverse of the van trick. Yeah. <laughs> God, yeah. people running around on those big suits and stuff yeah. god it'd be just melting yeah and so there you go yeah that's a, you know that's a good little callback I like that but it's a bit convenient that they that yeah. they think oh he's going to put him in this van oh yeah you know. okay this is wonderful I love this stuff okay when when um, when Elsa comes around and, and says whispers to Indy you know, I can't. You know, can't forget last night or whatever. Is. <laughs> and 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 Sean Connery answers talks, well, yeah, answers well. Harrison Ford's face <laughs> at that moment. It's my favourite thing he's ever he ever does. His <laughs> face is so good. When you, you just see you just see part of his face as he turns around. Yeah, this is just a great setup. Dear, she doesn't know him. Yeah. She doesn't know Indiana. No. He's not after the ground. Yep. Yeah, this is it. <laughs> right now, look, Harrison Ford. <laughs> <laughs> I've never noticed that. <laughs> oh, that is brilliant. Oh, that's great. <laughs> it's like, it's like ugh, dad. <laughs> 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 oh, she, oh, she's, oh, she's a lip that's sucker. That's great. Yeah, it's like little strings of saliva. It's like, yeah. And, and then I love this. The way he gets punched in it and yeah, whacks him Connery in the back. <laughs> I'll be like, don't kiss me, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. This is just such a great conceit, them tied up like this. Oh, this is this sort of first little moment of, uh, I suppose, his father being sort of clumsy and... Um, Drops a light, doesn't he? Yeah. And then uh, later on, he does. Also, he does the same by shooting up the plane. You know. Yeah. Hmm. 
and then he tries to blow it out and just blows the flame onto the curtains. <laughs> <laughs> and he's... I've got to tell you something. Let's not get sentimental now, Dad. Save it till we go out. The floor's on fire. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's quite a difficult thing to do, actually. actually yeah, hurt, exactly. Burning yeah. yourself. Yeah, I, I probably would have done exactly the same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that, that, musical that, cue. Very, that's, that's so that's, good. Yeah, that's sort of that sort of musical Great. cue kind of comes out where you re- kind of repeat slightly uh, mm. with hook, you know. Right. Yeah. But it's just perfect. <laughs> dun, 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 yeah, see, dun, you're just sitting in. You're going. Look, Williams is bringing it. It's all happening. I've got, I've got a new theme tune for the Nazis. I've got, I've got loads of tunes coming at me. <laughs> it's just great. It's a trailer line. Oh yeah, I think I used that as well. Yep. Okay, this. <laughs> it's it's just like a double act now. Isn't the lady Sorry. they see in the minute when they reverse through and I see the lady? She goes, Alarm! <laughs> it looks like the lady. They well, it's probably just coincidence. Um, in Austin Powers, um, oh, uh, Doctor Evil's assistant. Yeah, I don't think so no but but i but i get can't, can't the similarities so. no no yeah. it's not her no yeah <laughs> but the the, the the look on their faces as they go flying by it's like <laughs> <laughs> it's so... and then there's and then when they smile <laughs> It's, it's just great. It's like it's just gag after gag after gag. <laughs> it conveniently stops halfway for him. <laughs> yeah, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. And they. Okay, this is this is a great gag. Watch this. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, come on! <laughs> that, that, that is, is amazing. Good. That is good. That is amazing. See, that's just you know. See, you never get in all the the Spielberg pretenders. You never get stuff like that. That's that's the genius. I <laughs> love. He's really like. Come on, Dan. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. He just like sits down the chair, yeah. doesn't he? Yeah. So this coming up now is a sequence that they that wasn't in the original script. It wasn't in the original cut of the film, but Spielberg felt there needed to be more action. Oh, this is the moment with, yeah, with the, yeah. Uh, the bike, the bike chase, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah. Which they shot around Skywalker Ranch. Wasn't yes. It? Yeah. In Northern California, I believe. Well, Skywalker Ranch is in, uh, is it San Francisco, isn't it? I think. Yeah. Well, it's, yeah. Yeah. North of there, I think. Mm. See, I love that shot. You see, he he uh, he sees the bike, but you don't know what he's what it is he's looked at. <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> it's quite. How he knew there was a bike in there, I don't know, but <laughs> it's great. I love these guys. Ah! <laughs> so yeah, so all this stuff they was uh, yeah they added. Like he's looking to disappointment. Just with him so unimpressed. Way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> This is a good action scene. It's kind really of like, like a, a sequence that um, Joe Johnson kind of did come like Captain America when he's like right, chased yeah. by the guys on the motorbikes and stuff. Yeah. Good. 
It, fit, it kind of fits it, doesn't it, really? Because it's the same sort mm. of period and stuff. Oh, score's so good. <laughs> Which is cool. That's actually Harrison Ford and uh, doing it, Sean yeah. Connery in that. Yeah. I think they had a blast doing this. Oh, it must have done. Yeah. This is great. I love this one here when it's like, yeah, a bit yeah. of jousting, isn't it? Yeah. He throws it into the wheel. <laughs> yeah. Like, it spins in the air. It's yeah, got a sort that's... of uh, Ben Burt sort of sound yeah. effects. And then boom. And the way that it careens into them. Ah. Well, yeah. it was, was Vic Armstrong handling the second unit on this? Was he, just, was he still just doubling for um, Harrison? I think he was just doubling. Mm. I think the second unit might have still been Glenn Randall, who was the original double for Harrison Ford in Raiders. Right. But yeah, here we go. This is yeah. This is such a cool moment. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, come love on! It. <laughs> and again, I love it. He, he finds it. He finds yeah. it hysterical. Yeah. But sure, yeah, his father's not impressed. <laughs> Looks at his watch. Mm. <laughs> Does his watch up? <laughs> And he's like so, and Harrison Ford's so upset that yeah. he's not impressed he's, he's, with his dad. Yeah, he just wants that sort of validation, <laughs> yeah, he doesn't he? He just wants that validation from him. <laughs> this is a great moment coming up when he when he blasphemes and from he slaps, slaps him. him. Yeah. The look on Ford's face. I wrote them down in my diary, you idiot. I didn't have to remember. <laughs> yeah. you know. It's great. This is yeah, a wonderful moment. Little, yeah. One little isolated moment for Sean yeah. Connery to really yeah. s- sell his yeah. devotion to the Grail yeah. and what it stands yeah. for. Yeah, but that he's yeah that he's that it's not a that it's not about him and the Grail. It's about stopping the Nazis getting it. And that's a great moment where he he, he brings up the mum and and you see you see Sean Connery the way he says that is you didn't. No, you didn't know her mm. as well as I did. You know, you can't speak for your mum. I knew her. Yeah. Are they all burning books, aren't they? Yeah. This is. I mean, this is this is pretty epic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the way this looks. It's interesting now. I'm not sure if we, had, if we had brought it up when we did Raiders, but it was this at, at more recent films recently that deal with that sort of period. They they often shy away from the Nazi symbol and um, yeah. they try and sort of uh, dilute it in some way. Yeah. So I can understand their way of thinking, but it's also it's kind of uh, it's it's not representing history properly. Mm. Um, I, I don't know. I um, think you know. I suppose, I suppose how it's kind of used in context. I, suppose, I can watch you know. these movies and but, see the Nazis as, 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 you know, here, here, because it, you know, this doesn't do that. No, you no, know, it, 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 it's, it's full on books of book burning. Yeah. Which is 
stupid in itself. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and it's great. And how she and, knows. Yeah, she knows. She it's knows bad. that this is wrong. This, this is her yeah. for audience to know that she is not truly evil. No. She's, she's not. She, yeah. like Indiana, but she she's obviously after. Again, she's like uh, Turlock, saw history. Shadowy whatever. reflection of him. Yeah. Just, just, just gone down a different path. But this is this is a good moment between the two of them. That's great. So yeah. Damn, what do you yeah. think? I'm Harrison Ford and I'm a grumpy <laughs> ass. <laughs> yes, I love that. It's a great moment. Yeah. It's a great moment. All I have to do is squeeze. All I have to do is scream. <laughs> this, <laughs> is, yeah. it out, this, it. Is, this is amazing. This is amazing. <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah. Okay, this is a really, this is really dumb, but, but I think appropriate. You know, yeah. to have Indy come face to face with Hitler or Admiral Ozzel. and it's like it's it's, it's in the yeah, it's enemy's like, it's hands, in Hitler's it's, hands. Yeah, <laughs> the diary, and he opens it up and he signs it. Come on, it's a great gag. <laughs> come on. <laughs> <laughs> the way he realises what's going on. So, whew, that's a close one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here we here we here we enter some some good effects, but mostly dodgy. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, ILM always pushing blue screen and. Um, mm. Where the the British crews were often with the Bond stuff, it was like front projection, um, sort of you know eliminate that kind of you know those matte lines. Um, but also blue screen, yeah. you, you can also be more flexible. Yeah. How you're oh yeah. I mean, you know, project, um, you know, front projection, you, it's very restrictive. It is, yeah, you got. Um, but yeah, it's I, when I watched this before see, I reviewed see, it. Look, over that's a year dodgy. Ago, this this is dodgy right here. Look. Yes. That's that, dodgy, the, the worst, but, that, but that is amazing. That is really that good. is amazing. Yeah. yeah, the worst bit is when they he throws out the guy, the other Nazi guy. And yeah, and he goes, his, and he's like shaking yeah. his fist. Yeah, you yeah. Know? it's like old he's man like, shouts yeah. at cloud. Yeah, you know, sort of thing. Um, <laughs> from the Simpsons. Yeah, that's a, that's a wobbly shot. Yeah. yeah, I think yeah, all the long shots of the blimp and stuff look really good when it's yeah. like it's they, when they say, oh, we're we're turning yeah, around and, and it cuts and to a and wide going around. Yeah, but once they get in the plane, it's. You know, they sort of that sort of uh, yeah. It's all that's, so. There's Pat Roach dog fighting. It there's Pat Roach, who I believe I think he's, he got he, black he, eye there because he, because he I think cut, have, didn't he? Yeah, because obviously there was a fight scene because he because it was tradition to have Pat Roach fight Indy, but I think but they cut it out. I really want to know what he said to that guy to persuade him to borrow his uniform. <laughs> <laughs> this is good though. Yeah, no ticket. It's great. <laughs> And again, Williams is getting the tone perfect with the score. How it's just just a little bit silly. (laughs) 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 It's like he's trying to focus. He hasn't got his glasses on. Yeah, yeah, he's trying to focus on what that is. When he turns around and sees that it's it's Harrison Ford, his face. (laughs) you think you would have said that in in german yeah well you know it's a gag for the audience yeah 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 yeah, 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 okay look that's dodgy that is dodge So you know, that's a great. Yeah, shot. that's lovely. I that's like wonderful. That. Yeah, nice one. Yeah, but you know, see, to me, this has got its fair share of dodgy effect shots, but it doesn't have the minecart sequence. So, you know, Temple of Doom wins. I'm sorry, <laughs> <laughs> the minecart sequence is just too damn it is good. It's a good sequence, Brad. It's too this damn is, good. This is a better story. <laughs> I think.
Oh, and, and I believe that both Harrison Ford and Sean Connery have no trousers on in this scene. What? And they're on, the trousers yeah, there? In, yeah, in the in the medium shots. Why not? But you can't see their legs. It's too hot. It was too hot. Oh, really? Yeah. And uh, Sean Connery sweats a lot, so he, he had to take his trousers off. He's a, hairy man. He's a hairy man, though. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, when we when we cut to the to the mediums of them, just picture that they don't have the trousers on. <laughs> I'm thinking they have like Hawaiian shorts on. <laughs> yeah. And flip flops. <laughs> <laughs> It's just yeah, you we just have to go silent here because you just got these two great actors. Yeah, yeah, I, that, that's an amazing line. You left just when you were becoming interesting. Yeah, <laughs> and he goes, "Okay, let's talk." Yeah, and he doesn't know what to say. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> just imagine Sean Connery there with no no trousers on. <laughs> <laughs> This is great. I do. It does make sense that the the blimp starts to turn around. It's like, yeah, of course they're not going to like go. Oh well, he got they got away. Yeah, it's like yeah. Penitent man, penitent, penitent man. <laughs> what does it mean? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out, you know, yeah. That's really good how yeah. the, the lighting yeah. that casts shadow. Yeah, you know. yeah, great great storytelling, great mm. visual storytelling. It's another <clears> film we kind of dealt dealt with like a blimp like two years later, like the Rocketeer. Yeah. Which is not a ILM, yep, ILM. production. Ken, Ken Ralston supervised that, mm. I believe. As a kid, I was, you know, with Rocketeer, I always thought it was a guy on wires, but it's actually just a little yeah, uh, pu- stop, puppet. stop motion puppet, yeah. Yeah. It's great. I love it. I love it. As a kid, I had a choice between Turtles 2 and the Rocketeer, and I chose Turtles 2. Mm. 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 Yeah, kind of like, <laughs> mm, I should have seen Rocketeer, really. Never mind. <laughs> Classic line. Okay. <laughs> So, yeah, here we go. Kind of dodgy background on those, uh, on the green screens. Well, that's good surround sound, actually. Yeah. <laughs> that was like right, this shot, this shot, this shot, this shot's amazing. Look, look at that. I love it. Yes. <laughs> you know, we have those things, but look, look at the white mat lines around these, <laughs> these planes. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> that but, is, uh, uh, this is, this is. But I don't care. Like, it doesn't, like, you know, I don't mind because the, it adds to the old-fashioned feel of these movies. Yeah, but true. you know, but but if you're gonna if we're gonna be critical about effects, this you know, <laughs> you know, and this is 1989 for crying out loud. This is... So he is making an effort though to shoot stuff that is in in camera, like they are doing oh, yeah. second unit. Yeah, stuff. It's just uh... oh yeah, absolutely. And uh... <laughs> the quick shot of the airplane there with the. Tail intact. This is great, though. I do. This is a great moment. <laughs> so it's like they optically added in the um, the uh, the rotor blades at the front. No. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> okay. this is, this uh, is it's cool. a great shot coming up when yeah. they get in the car and it goes through the tunnel and the yep. plane follows yep. and oh, yeah. cuts its wings off and then yep. that's a brilliant shot and it yep. passes by them and the yep. guy in the plane is looking at them like okay. this is it so this was the first ever clip I saw this movie <laughs> was trying to kill Indiana it's so good 
<laughs> Poor bloke. <laughs> So this, yeah, this is, this is pretty funny. Look at that, that's a great shot, nice long lens shot. If they, uh, Hitchcock sort of north yeah. by northwest. Sort of yeah, very style. much, very much. They're driving pretty exactly. slowly, actually. Yeah. Okay, here we go. That. Okay, this, and this model plane comes around and... <laughs> that's great. Right. <laughs> But they, the, it's the instant cut where they don't come any closer than that. And cuts to the bomb being dropped. It's like... Here we go, this. <laughs> That's just brilliant editing. Brilliant. <laughs> Okay, so coming up is one of the worst model shots ILM have ever done. Really? Yeah, yeah. The front of the plane getting hit by the by the by the seagulls. Oh, by the seagulls. Yeah, it's 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 terrible. I think it's probably a reflection of that he had too much stuff going on at that that year. Probably, yeah. I mean, but also it, it's the problem is that you're you're tackling something that's shot during the day, and you just can't hide those mat lines mm. sometimes. So they're all fake. <laughs> okay, right, here we here go. go. This, this shot coming up is... That. Come on, look at that. Uh, <laughs> it's <yeah>. terrible. <laughs> it, looks, it looks about the size of my hand. <laughs> <laughs> my Charlemagne. <laughs> I'm Sean Connery. It's a great look from... From Harrison there. Oh, that musical yeah. cue. Yeah, come on. Well, he slows it down, John yeah. Williams does. I mean, he doesn't use the Indiana Jones theme, no, theme a doesn't. lot in this. That's, that's, in this yeah, because when I, when I did the review, it was like trying to find musical cues that, that were kind of, you know, the big theme. And yeah. um, they're not actually yeah. no, deployed that he, much. He, he, he stayed away from it a lot and only uses it on the moments. Here we, so here's Alexi Sale. <laughs> oh, he's great, Alexi Sale, isn't he? <laughs> We we have to understand is you know in the UK, Alexis Hale was just like an alternate comedian, stand up guy very that was in the, guy, wasn't yeah, he? yeah, very left wing guy yeah, on a, the young ones, the establishment, and, uh, yeah, and that, yeah, that fit with the young yeah, ones, you know? yeah, and then here he is just turning up in one of the biggest Hollywood releases of the. Of if you go on, year. if you go on um, on YouTube, there's a great uh, when I think in the nineties, that BBC had this kind of night of kung fu movies. And they had Alexi Sale talking about dubbed movies. Oh yeah, like, it's comedy yeah. gold. It's right. wonderful. About so about ten minutes long, but yeah, it's worth checking out. Right. <laughs> but also, it's like another comedian that sort of come to play these kind of uh, comedic characters, which was uh, like in the Mummy. Mm. Um, I've forgotten his name now. Um, oh damn. He goes along for the journey with them, um, Brendan Fraser and, and stuff, and he gets the bug inside him and it crawls in his head. Um, yeah. Well, it, actually, we, you know, we're talking about um, sort of other movies sort of, sort of trying to co copy or have the magic of Indiana Jones. I think The Mummy came pretty close, the first one did, in that sort of adventure Kind of movie yeah, with, yeah, with it, had, it did, it did have the, some charm to it, mm. but yeah, but but it's still like not. It's, it's still it's, hitting. Yeah, it's, missing, it still misses some yeah. of the, the Spielberg sensibilities yeah. to it. It's always bugged, bugged me because the picture weave, right? Yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah, the, the, vib the vibration, vibration from the, from yeah, the car. It's, it's like, oh, my eyes have gone funny. Yeah. <laughs> um, that must have bugged the shit out of Spielberg when he saw yeah, the rushes. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> Lucas is probably like, ah, oh, we can't really do yeah, anything after that. Yeah, we can't yeah, do that. So it's fine, it's fine. Let's reshoot it 20 years like, later. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm surprised Bill, uh, Lucas hasn't come in and re done CGI versions of them. <laughs> <laughs> this is cool. Well, this, you know, this is another... This third act kind of battle is very much like a repeat of Raiders, <clears throat> wasn't it? This yeah. Was one of the, 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 the criticisms, I think, laid upon it. 
Because <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd spit yeah, on your face, yeah, yeah. man. You spit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he just takes it from him. Oh, that's so good, <laughs> that bit. <laughs> is, it, is it really more significant than the Ark of the Covenant? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, that's. So this is a uh, yeah. So so the whole tank sequence wasn't designed to be as lengthy as it as it was. Was it just a knock on effect of mm. like we need more action? Let's extend it. Yeah, yeah. And um, and I think in Spielberg just uh, storyboarded out a whole long action sequence, and I think it was like scheduled for two days, and it ended up being around eight. <laughs> well out of range. Yeah. This <laughs> car just randomly blows up. <laughs> Does this have the Wilhelm scream in this? I think it does. Yes, it must do. Ben Burke can't help himself. Someone, someone, please do a like a I don't know, like take a ten minute clip from this film. Just every, every hit, punch, fall is a Wilhelm scream. <laughs> <laughs> Dedicated to Ben Burke. Grail protectors. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who are these guys? <laughs> yeah, there was not also like I think when I when I covered Raiders, there was action figures that that, that came out for Raiders done yeah. by I think by Kenner as well, and they're really right. well, really well articulate and that for the time, but they didn't sell very well because kids wanted to pretend to be in Dow Jones, not play with the toys yeah. essentially. So they, there was never anything. I don't think anything for Temple of Doom and Last Crusade. I never saw anything for Last Crusade. Any toys? Right. There, yeah, there go, was the that. Wilhelm. There it was. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, a strange thing, isn't it? Where I think, yeah, if you just get the hat and jacket and a whip, yeah, you rather be in yeah, Dow Jones. People wanted to dress up as him. Then anyone who push around little figures of him yeah <laughs> who is he who is he <laughs> <laughs> but she was showing like she's like looked a bit distraught there, yeah you know seeing what is the death surrounding her yeah I think she didn't realise it was going to get quite mm. so bloody. So I believe this horse that Indy rides here was used in Rambo Three. Really, and was like quite one of a, like a major horse that was used in a lot of movies. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 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 Idiots, <laughs> but because because uh, yeah. Vic Armstrong bred horses, didn't he? Yeah. So I'd be, yeah because Vic worked on Rambo Three, mm. so yeah, yeah, probably the same horse. I, I love this bit. I love this where he keeps slapping him, and he just stops him. <laughs> Silent scum. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's great. It's a great yeah, line. That's great. It's brilliant. <laughs> I think not. I'm not that Jones. The other Jones. <laughs> I said no camels. That's five camels. Can't you count? <laughs> I love that. Great, yeah. I love that sort of description of a tank. Yeah, yeah. That, steel of that steel beast. Steel beast. That's wonderful. And you just hear the, the sound mix of the noise of the tank come over. God, I would have loved to see this on, you know, the premiere, like, 70 millimetre print of this. Yeah. You know. I mean, great. Yeah. Okay, so this this sequence is bloody great. I mean, it is. Oh, it's, it's brilliant. Yeah. Really, really well it's kind of got choreographed and yeah. staged and uh, thought out. Yeah. Um, it, it does miss the sort of, like, in the first one where he's, you know, 
he's chasing up those trucks, gets in, has a fight, and yeah. falls out of it. And yeah. you know, there's there's a bit more energy to it. I yeah. think. Where this oh yeah, the truck scene is one of the greatest action scenes in history. But mm-hmm. I just love things like the, you know little simple cutaways like that, like of the the shell falling out. You know, yeah, most people just bullets, would yeah. just do the, the shell and that's it. Or then do a cutaway of Henry and and Denim Elliot. But it but it's just that quick and whip pan to the guys, you know. I love that stuff. You know, no cutaway should be boring. You know, you should make you know, keep keep the motion, keep the uh keep the whole thing moving. And that's great. And again you and you get you it get also, exactly what he's done there. He knows that they have such a limited point of view, like yep. where they can see. Yeah, exactly. Smart. He uses his smarts, and this is quite, This is a great action cue. <laughs> Again, I love it. I love, I love it when Indy sees something and you don't know what it is, and he's got an idea and you're not quite Harrison sure. Harrison just is. did that, didn't he? He leant down to grab that rock. Was that Harrison? No, it must have been Vic Armstrong, it, surely. Oh. It was pretty close to camera. Mm. Mm. This poor bloke. <laughs> he's dead. This is just great. In. Would that really work? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I, I, mm. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Again, I remember seeing a clip of this moment as well, going, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I can't wait. <laughs> oh I can't God, wait to oh see God, this. Oh I God. can't wait to see it. <laughs> this was, yeah, this was right at the time where I was old enough to know about filmmaking and know, you know, and so even when I'm looking at these clips, I'm seeing... I'm seeing the magic happening. I'm seeing Spielberg back at the helm of an Indiana Jones movie. And I'm like, because oh, we'd addressed it before, hadn't we? That this was kind of like Spielberg saying goodbye to that, that period of his life. Yeah. Um, where he's now maturing. Yeah. Come the night. I mean, Jurassic Park is still like fun Spielberg. It's still his kind of sense of wonder, but it's, mm. this is and and hook as well. Mm. But this felt like a sort of a, a defining moment. The sort of the Wait, shift yeah. for him, even though he kind of done color purple, wasn't it? Yeah, um, well, he d- yeah, but and, it, Empire but, of the Sun. Yeah. Um, but the you know, which, which <laughs> that's great, that's great. Isn't it? I mean, color purple and Empire of the Sun, I, 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 you know, I love them on for lots of reasons. Mm. But the the you know, at the end of the end of the eighties, uh, and then in and then yeah, the early nineties, obviously when Schindler's List happened, that that was the big defining change for him really mm. that was he's a different filmmaker now and why when he when he revisits these these sort of things you know again he, it's Spielberg I, I love the stuff he does and and I can wonder at the way he stages things and that but there's just something not quite something missing yes because it's he's because he's a different missing. filmmaker he's moved yeah. on yeah he's which not is, which is fine you know he's, he's allowed not to young anymore he's not no. he doesn't have children he's yeah. you know he's uh you know, we still we've still got these movies to to love and cherish, and that's that's the whole point. <laughs> you got a groin shot there. Yep. He's <laughs> having a laugh. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This this. This hurts. I mean, you feel this. You know, this is great. I love this, you know, when you start having double action going on, you intercut between the two, and then there's more things happening. Look, that, you, oh, oh that, that hurts. The pen is mightier yeah, than, than the, the sword. sword. It's like, why is it? There you go. <laughs> he's, 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 he's just a buffoon now. I, I love his buffoonery. 
that. <laughs> Come on. Great. That's incredible. The this is up in the air. Bodies flying up in the air. And then and then we, here we have a, a classic cliffhanger moment. That's a bit Jedi. Yep. I think that's actually Harrison Ford hanging off that thing. Ouch. <laughs> I suppose some of these actors, you know, when it comes to doing these sort of stunts, I mean, I, th- I, think, I think there's a majority of them that would like to do these things because, you know, that's the fun yeah. part. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's all part to, of the fun. And you've signed up to be a hero. And yeah. you know, if you don't do those heroic moments, exactly. it's, it kind of, like, you know... Well, I guess it's uh, like if I, you know, it's kind of like if I was going to direct a movie like this and then, but the producers said, oh, all the action is going to be done by second unit. I'd be like, well, yeah, then I'm not going to yeah. do it because yeah. cause I want to do this stuff. the fun know? part, yeah. Mm. I do love it in movies. Everyone seems to get knocked out quite quickly, don't they? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> everyone's, everyone's very good at knocking people out. <laughs> Although that's going to hurt. <laughs> Come on. That's great. Ooh. See, I love this stuff. Look. But then how does the how does the tank straighten out now? <laughs> it should just be going around in circles. It now, should be, it? yeah. <laughs> but then this is... So this is classic. The way the... The way the uh, the uh, score changes on the beat of the cut of the where you see they're heading towards the canyon. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Look at that mat. Love it. Yeah, that's a that's a fantastic that matte is, painting. You don't, you don't, that's seamless. Yeah. <laughs> this is great. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, I just love all that all that. That shit where you you just you see the guy's hat go down and this is like oh my god oh my god oh, he's get like, that, that's such a good move the way Harrison Ford pulls the whip out and punches the guy with with the hand <laughs> and as he's as he's calling back to to throw the whip it's so good and then because we, we forget about um, Salah Salah yeah he's yeah. at the right time comes yeah. in he's put poor Sod's probably trying to catch up <laughs> this is great. Oh, you, you see can, the little yeah, you can see the line. Yeah, but that 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 yeah. that one is great. And this is where his hat ha- comes off. The hat comes off. There you go. The tan line. Yep. <laughs> that's that's a. I love that shot. <laughs> now I'm I'm convinced that they mix in a little bit of Harrison Ford screaming in that. So just as it goes over the edge, it almost sounds like Harrison Ford screaming. Really? Yeah, they make there's um it's even, they even have the, like little miniature of the Nazi general getting just falling out of the uh, tank. Then yeah. So th- okay, this is wonderful. She's the, great. Yeah. The comic, the comedy in this moment that then suddenly becomes really touching is is so good. Connery's great. He's brilliant. I love him. He's uh, when he says, um, "I thought I lost you, I boy. I lost your boy." Yeah, that's like, it's a, yeah, yeah, great emotional. Oh, he's the, but when he when he turns around and realizes that as he goes to hug him, Sean Connery's face, it's it's magic. But this bit is like one of the funniest moments in <laughs> cinema. Like this, way he looks over. I remember everyone in the cinema just dying. It's so funny. <laughs> so, what, so what are we looking? <laughs> yeah, at? Yeah, what are we looking at? Yeah. <laughs> here we go. Like right, look at Connery's face here. Oh my god! Yeah. That's wonderful. <laughs> Mark is trying to work it out. That's the musical cue, isn't it? When yep. you see, is it the painting? No, when he comes back into the house at the beginning, isn't it? With the when River Phoenix comes into the house and he's got the he gets his dad's attention. He's like, wait, I think that's a. Well, it's, the, it's the father's theme. Yeah, isn't it's the it? father's theme. Yeah. 
And here and here and yes, yes, this film has permission to do this. Just throw just throw his yeah. hat into shot. <laughs> <laughs> That's just fantastic. That's a good another good map painting. Canyon of the Crescent Moon. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it looks like a crescent it's, it's moon. It's a gooey bit, isn't it? Where they got the little uh, <laughs> Oh marker, yeah, the mark, uh, yeah. levels up the rocks. I see now because of the interior is different to the exterior, isn't it, of this uh yeah. ancient ruin. So this is well this this is Petra, isn't it? Which is which is Is it in Jordan? Yeah. Yeah. And I remember this from uh uh Sinbad and the Eye of the Tiger. Ah, and then Michael Bay went back to it in Transformers 2, didn't he? Yeah. He probably blew it up in the film, I can't yeah. remember. Right, well, of course he did. Yeah. Blow up everything, yeah. please. There's something there, let's blow it up. Um, but it's, yeah, it's, it's, an, it's an incredible... Are they stopped people business. going to visit it now? Or, I can't remember. I think maybe you can't walk inside and just see the exterior, can't you? Yeah. I don't know. I, I yeah. think I was... Because was, what's his name visited it in uh, um, Idiot Abroad, I, I believe. Oh, um... Damien Pilkington? Bob. Yeah. 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 Nice, nice wide-angle lens there. You can see the, uh, see the distortion. Look at that. That's perfect framing. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> it's... Exactly, all all the characters all just stopped across the screen like that. This is great when it when you get so close, you see, it's it's like a ghost, it's like a like a spirit. Yeah, kind of walks past it. Kind of all the the webs kind yeah. of open up. Yeah, all this this sort of air comes through. Mm. Yeah, really good. What I always like about this is, is the whole the whole point of this bit is the penit- only the penitent man will pass and the penitent man is humble before God, so he kneels, so which means that you need to kneel otherwise you get your heart head cut off by this by this Massive sword blade. thing. Yeah. But then I didn't realize the penitent man also then has to do a forward flip. True. <laughs> yes, which you'll see. In a Must second. be good at roly poly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the penitent man will kneel before God and do a forward flip. Kneel before Zod. <laughs> <laughs> next <laughs> hello it's like a ticket machine <laughs> next yep. <laughs> Go in. Yep. who's next good bit now I do believe that mm-hmm. the gun that shoots Sean Connery is a war for PPK oh for the as Bond in, yeah reference. as in James Bond's gun well of course but this was a moment I remember in the cinema not expecting it at all did not expect Sean Connery gets shot. Didn't you? No. Mm. I remember when it happened, it was like, I, I, oh my God. I have no memory of that. Actually, I, all I remember as a kid was just kind of the opening, really. Mm. That's my sort of memory of it. It's, it's a weird thing with Indiana Jones movies, because I'm sure I, I, I don't want to contradict myself. Um, I never actually owned them till years later. It was like, They're always on TV. So yeah. You just kind of just watch them. When they're on, yeah. You know, even if you're halfway into it, mm. you just start watching the rest of it. It's so good. But Temple of Doom, I remember just being like scared of as a kid. <laughs> that and Star Trek Two, you know, Sonoran. where the thing goes in the guy's ear and thing. Yeah, set the out of five bug. So yeah, this is this is a great moment. Oh, oh that the way echo. that echoes, the way the gunshot echoes. Oh, yeah, that's good. Get back, you Nazi! Mm. I do like how he's uh, when he does heal him. It's kind of like. They wash off the makeup. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> Which is, it little, bit of, little bit of foam. You know. just... <laughs> but because it's now, 
his father dies come number four because Sean didn't have, didn't want to be in it or mm. scheduling. What I think he's retired. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he wasn't yeah. making movies. Yet. Um, wouldn't that? <laughs> It's supposed to give you everlasting life. No, that was it. No, because you can only have everlasting life if you, you can, stay. You have to stay in the confounds well, of the a, seal. Yeah, it's a bit of a. Yeah, it's you know, yeah, yeah, it's a little convoluted. I, mean, I don't really want to stay in there. Yeah, you know, unless you know you had. It was now that you have internet, loads of food. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah you <laughs> you can, can, I could probably you can hook it up with that. Wi-Fi. Then uh, yeah. yeah, you'd be right for like you know. I, I think you just lose your mind after about a year. Yeah, to be well, honest. yeah, you dress up like a knight and yeah. I couldn't do it. Pendant man. As a kid, I was just like, oh, wouldn't his, wouldn't his father live forever? You know, mm. but, you know, it's not well, paying, yeah. Well, not he paying. drinks it as well, so, yeah, so not, would he. Yeah, not paying attention would, uh, mm. you know, you just, well, they've told you that you have to stay there. It's a great set piece, isn't it? Because it, yeah. it just seems, it all kind of just seems to work. It doesn't feel like something slightly out of place. It's, it's, it's pure Indiana Jones. Mm. Here we go. So this is the penitent man kneels before God and then does a forward flip. There we go. Here comes the breath of God. Kneels. There you go, and then does a full flip. <laughs> yeah. <Sad. laughs> See again, I do like the the practical, you know, traps, the application of the practice, and they're and they're all kind of tied up with uh, with you know mythology and with you know religious iconography and what mm. you're doing you know and, you know the idea of walking across the you know traversing the ravine without you know walking on air and mm. it's actually just a painted bridge which w- yeah. which would never work ever <laughs> no. just by virtue of having two eyeballs <laughs> <laughs> it but it's a great like, sort of optical <laughs> illusion isn't it yeah. when he goes across yeah but the... it can only work with a camera it can't work in real life no not at all <laughs> so real suspension of disbelief on that one mm. Jake. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> so that reminds me of the Goonies. It does, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's really good. Instantly cracked. Oh, oh, oh. You touch it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so the leap from the lion's head. Now, yeah, it's it's like, can you, can you buy it? Because, look, that wouldn't look like that if there was actually a bridge there painted. Mm. From that, if it, if it works for that angle, then it can't work for another angle. Mm. Me being picky, but as a kid, I was thinking, hmm. I was like, really? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it, it, you know, it's a wonderful effect. I mean, because that is actually that is that shot there is actually the miniature set with with the painted bridge on it. So the yeah. fact that you can't see the bridge there is actually an optical illusion. Oh yeah. So it's uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's great. It's wonderful. I like it. I like it. <laughs> oh, just you just just put your foot out and just see if you can feel anything, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Although I do remember thinking, how are they going to do this? How are they going to do this? So, okay, so look, this is a good shot. I mean, I love it. It's a miniature and Harrison Ford. You can see him wobbling about there. Yeah, he's like, like yeah, shimmering yeah, in the optical. Because he's, he's comped on some motion control. It's motion control, control isn't yeah, it? Yeah. yeah. 
but you know it it's a it's a stunning effect you know and that that's a real miniature and they really painted that on the bridge section so that from a specific angle it was invisible and um, love how he throws the sand isn't it all this sort of thing. yeah gravel now this is a uh, robert edison isn't it uh, yes. he would play the grail knight which will, apparently they said it was they originally wanted Laurence Olivier Li, Laurence Olivier yeah but he was obviously very unwell at the time he died mm. in 89 yeah I suppose when they shot this it would be made yeah because I remember thinking it was when I first saw it mm. I thought it was Laurence Olivier because you, know, you would have thought I mean Robert had, had done theatre a lot of theatre a bit of TV and stuff but he wasn't a well known name you know, I don't mm. think most people were like who, who is this guy mm. per- wonderful performance yeah really good as a grail knight mm. um <laughs> it's a little bit of humour there, um, but it, I suppose it would have been ideal to have this kind of classic actor. Yeah, and Laurence Olivier would have been the one. Yeah, maybe Alec Guinness, maybe at the time, you know, could have been a choice. But yeah, but he he's great. He yeah. is great, and I love the way everything in this scene has got is lit orange, except for him. Yeah, he's all blue. Yeah, the night is all. He's, he's, he's like lit. He's like a ghost. Yeah, he, exactly. Blind. He's lit in, in such a white blue white light and everything else is orange it's amazing it's really it's really really good it's really effective old Dougie Slocum doing his and there's a there's a real there's a real kind of um Jeffrey Unsworth tights on the lens feel to this Mm. this sequence as well yeah slightly magical Yeah. yeah But I think it's the beauty of it. Oh, like they've got obviously got a smoke machine on the side there. It's not yeah. too. It's not too. It's not too much. It's just a little no. bit. But that shot, like the shot of Indy, look, that looks very unsworthy. Yeah. When he gives him the story, he's like, no. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't, yeah. 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 A night. What do you mean? No, I don't think you understand. I'd be, to be honest, I'd be more fascinated talking to the knight. Yeah. You know, than that, instead of being all this paraphernalia, all these yeah. little cups like, and yeah. stuff. Tell, tell me about what... What have you been doing for like a yeah. thousand years? Not as sleeping, I'd say. So this is the thing, right? So you've got, you've got a supernatural element here now, which is obviously this apparently immortal knight. Mm. Um, but it could just be a bloke, you know, it might not be, you know, like the, the supernatural element only really reveals itself completely, uh, at this moment when, uh, when he ages very quickly. And this is, this is a great moment. Yeah. I remember that I just love the way that the, the light goes on his face there, oh, yeah. the reflection of the... And when he drinks it, and he just she knows it's yeah. wrong. Yeah, she's, she knows yeah, exactly what yeah, she's done. Yeah, she knows what she's doing. Yeah, you know, I don't think she knows the specific. Well, she doesn't know what's going Yeah, but she knows it's not. Yeah, it's it, it is kind of like the fool is to go for the yeah. one that's the most uh, bling. Yeah, most bling, <laughs> bling, most glamorous kind of cup. You know, that seems like a, the cup mm. of a king, mm. a, a god. You know. Oh, so that water, water is quite stale, mm. actually. A bit stagnant. <laughs> yeah, a bit stagnant the, the, water, um, yeah. So there's there's a lot of puppetry that goes on here. and, and stuff Yeah, like, so it's, the, it's done by frame by frame, isn't it? Sort of like the yeah. hair ex- extends and she's yeah. got to kind of scream in that mm. sort of uh, that way. And then they, but I think they had about three different puppets that they that they morph between. And it's and we believe it's the first ever digital it's, it's composite. Yeah, uh, it's the the face app, isn't it? Where everyone's using, <laughs> everyone's using yes. it at the moment to make yes. stuff look old. It and is. We, me, Brad, tried yeah. yesterday. Brad looked, my mate looks amazing. I, I, look like, I literally look like my fucking dad. <laughs> right, here we go. So that it looks like Doc Brown there, and then uh, <laughs> it does. yeah, Bonnie! yeah. Um, so that's that's and, morphing that, between that's different like puppets. Evil dead. Yeah, like yeah. Do you know when they sort of hand drawn animation? This is yeah. digital compositing, wasn't it? It was the first ever digital composite, I believe. I I heard that somewhere, and I've believed it ever since. So I think that someone might know better. But this is cool. He chose poorly. poorly. I I'm always saying he chose poorly and he chose wisely. Or you know, in just in in everyday conversations <laughs> with people. 
<laughs> I just realised how much I Someone said cho- cho- sort of choosing a mask while I chose yeah. Snickers. Yeah, you chose I mean, okay. poorly. You, know? you chose wisely. <laughs> I, I say it. I, didn't, I just realised how much I quote this movie. It's the cup of a quoting machine. (laughs) (laughs) Got another one. (laughs) Here's one for you. Um, So yeah, but that that whole that whole Donovan decaying sequence is because I always thought it was I always thought it was the morphing technique, but it wasn't. Um, It was you know digital composite. They well they did do morphing. They morphed between three. There's three different puppets that they morphed between. So there is morphing going on. I don't because I yeah. looked into it. I don't think it was the software they'd used on Willow. I think it was a a composite blend of those things. Um, yeah, I have to double check that. Oh, I can't now. Oh no! Shit! <laughs> <laughs> this is done live, people. <laughs> oh, Sunny D. <laughs> Healing power of the growl. That's it. Wash off that makeup. Yep. <laughs> when you do the back as well, because it went through him. <laughs> 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 nah, if it went through the wound and just healed it, all, mm. I suppose. But the way, he, the way, the way Connery looks at the growl. Is that it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think um, the DP should have then, because he's very pale there, maybe sort of throw, begin to throw a bit more colour on him, like a bit warmer shades to show that he's, you know, coming back to normal? I don't know. Well, that's what I would have done, Brad. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> I've been minded. You might have suggested it and I've gone, we haven't got time, mate. Sorry, Dougie. We've got to get this shot done. <laughs> Everyone's all scared of it. Yeah. Apart from the Nazis. Oh, she's she's conniving. Yeah. She's thinking, yeah. I'm going to go for that. And she picks it up. Yeah, she's going to get it. You mustn't leave. You must, you mustn't leave uh, the circle, isn't it? Yeah. You mustn't cross the seal. Yeah. Bloody woman. So this is quite a massive physical effect. Oh yeah, this is you know yeah, like the sort of destruction of Krypton sort yeah. of thing. You yeah, know. it's great. Love, I love it. It's like yeah. in Ghostbusters where the you know outside yeah. that hotel, yeah. everything all comes apart. You know, yeah, you know. exactly. Yeah, look at that. That's yeah. So that all actually that all actually you know did that. Yeah, yeah. It's great in a way because Indiana does the same thing. He thinks yep. he can reach for it and he can't. He mm. can't get it. And uh, and he, to get his father get his attention. He just yep. calls him by the name he, he wants to be yep. called by. Yeah, it's a wonderful yeah. moment. Um, oh, that musical cue. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. great. You know. Oh, it's so heartwarming. It's, yeah. It's always with my dad. He'd always... My mum, actually. They they called me Ollie. But when I'm in trouble, mm-hmm. it's Oliver. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, same with me. If I'm, if anyone calls me Bradley, I'm like, oh, no, what have I done? What have I done? Yeah. Oliver! Mm. <laughs> Great sound effects there. <laughs> the, old, the old Ben Burtness. Went full on Burt. So they got they let them uh, have a big smoke machine in there. Yeah. <laughs> it's 
just one artifact that got away from him. Mm. <laughs> May he who illuminated his illuminate me. This is the first oh, thing right, but this is such a great <laughs> way to end the series, really. And it was riding off it, 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 it was Spielberg's intention to do this. It's yeah, rather than sunset, but it's plays it on a comedy again. I love it. Henry Jones Jr. Jr. Yeah, <laughs> I like it. <laughs> <laughs> what day after the dog? <laughs> 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 He's like really hurt. <laughs> Where's this way, Marcus? Just... <laughs> no, it's so good. It's just daft. Lost in his own museum. Uh, I love this. Yes, sir. Dun, dun, dun. So good. Ollie Harper. <laughs> <laughs> My own theme tune, folks. Yeah, it, it it does feel for me like the end of a the end of an era. Yeah, in cinema as well. The end of the eighties. Yeah, it's, it's the end of this fun, go lucky, joy of cinema period that that I love. And has, have always loved and grew up with, you know. Yeah, there's no denying that I that the reason I love this stuff is because I grew up with it. I mean, it's, of course, there's that. It's, but, but yeah, it's, it's there's always going to be a nostalgic factor yeah. for, for movies that. But when you but these movies endure. These these endure, have endured yeah. across they're, generations. They're, they're well made films. Yeah, you know, there's not it's not just a nostalgic factor. You, you're seeing it because you watch it as a child and you you're not you, you can you're blind to its faults. The movie's no. not. Uh, I don't think there's any faults really with its kind of storytelling direction. I think it's solid, and that's why people still watch it today. Yeah. And you can show it to your kids, and they'll still be enthralled by it and yeah. enjoy it. Um, and the only thing, you know, if, as we've gone through this, we've kind of pointed out some of its kind of flaws. They're not flaws to the extreme where it's a fault of the movie and no, it takes no, away your enjoyment. You just say, oh, that effect was a bit wobbly. This is, you know, kind of repeating some elements from Raiders. Mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't take away any enjoyment of it for me. Yeah. No, ab absolutely not. And, you know, and we, you know, I point out, you know, I, I'm kind of, I was kind of, I remember being perturbed by the effects in moments. Um, but I think, I, I lie, I don't think this was Michael J. McCann's first. I think he did The Goonies. Um, but after this, he did, he redeemed himself. He did the visual effects for Die Hard 2, which I, which I think is some of the best model work ever put on screen. Mm. Um, I, I love the effects in Die Hard 2. But, so yeah, so you so you got all those technical things, but then but a lot of the technical things are are part of it as well, and some of those flaws are part of part of the filmmaking. Like we said, you know, I can I can buy a miniature, you know, mine car jumping a track, but I but I have worse time buying a a, a fridge flying a CGI fridge <laughs> flying through the air, yeah, um, because just because of the nuts and bolts physics of what's going on. They're, I, I think, again, you know, I think I said this last time, I've tried to analyse why, and I do think it's down to that. But, so these, these movies just do represent that, that, you know, the digital age was just about to come in, you know, filmmaking was about to change and become so much more slicker in, in, in those regards. Mm. But to the point where a lot of people, and even people that didn't grow up with these movies, even people that are, you know, a lot younger than us, still look back on these movies and they get something out of them. There's a, there's a there's a you know, there's a tangibility to to them that yeah. that, that that speaks all, to us and they're all isolated kind of independent movies the whole trilogy is you don't have to watch Raiders and Temple of Doom to enjoy this you know you can watch it by itself and be in a contained film yeah of Indiana Jones and his adventure to find the Holy Grail and uh, you know uh, reunite with his father yeah um, no exactly you can you can watch these films out of order like Bond films course, you know, really you yeah know. exactly and and, uh, and 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 I kind of miss that. Because you've got a series of films here, but each of them is is a story being told, a beginning, middle, and end. And you know, this is you know a thing that we've moaned about a lot. 
and uh, where where you yeah where because people want a franchise and it's the same with TV shows because they want the next season they want it to keep going they never really conclude a story mm. and to me that's just that's a flaw it does it's I don't feel like I've been told a story if you don't conclude it and and the Indiana Jones movies are a great example of how you can have a series of movies you can have a, can have a franchise but you can also tell beginning middle and ends you know yeah which which to me is just so much more fulfilling oh yeah 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 I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, it's it's if if in terms of in regards to TV, if the writers have figured out how they're going to end it, you know, two seasons before, then they can yeah. probably then they can name wrap for things it, yeah. up. But because how TV works and how what we've seen over the last two decades of yeah. TV shows we get invested in, there's always this kind of fumbling end. Yeah, uh, where movies have don't have that issue generally, um, unless like the story, you know, they've made a film with a, a bit of a clunky ending, um, but. As we've seen with Indiana Jones and you know Star Wars films, it's uh, the sort of Lucas's uh, other productions. There is always kind of a clear kind of three act structure, um, and that's what the strength of good writing is. And uh, yeah. books as well, you know, it's why people often adapt books, no, you know, because they have a great absolute story. But if you look, you know, like if you look at Raiders, you know, one of the reasons why I love it so much is because it's such a it's such a brilliantly you know um, designed story. Mm. And the thing that people, you know, that you know, too cool for school hindsight people bang on about is, oh, yeah, but indie doesn't affect anything, so it's terrible. It's like, no, no, no. who who, who made that rule up anyway? It doesn't matter. But secondly, the way that film ends, the ending of that film is so damn good. Yeah. You know, the the the, the whole fact that that the arc itself just unleashes hell on the Nazis and because of the Nazis' in, inability to really understand and respect what's going on. And and so the wrath of God comes down and wipes them all out, and yeah. you know, and it's because it's so connected to the MacGuffin. It's so it's just a contained piece. It's a beginning, middle, and end of a story, and it's and it's wonderful. And yeah, and Indiana Jones is our adventurer that we're we're seeing the story through, but the actual story itself works. And and I I think the ending to Raiders is one of the greatest endings of all time. I, I love it. And um, you know, and that's and then the other movies follow suit. They they wrap it up. And uh, yeah, I'm just did I say did the same thing as Raiders wraps up yeah nicely like a nice bow yeah you know no exactly whilst giving you mystery and leaving things open for you to ponder but yeah. it's not leaving things open for you another know, sequel yeah we're not telling that part of the story because we're gonna make you pay another another twenty bucks to go and see it in IMAX but yeah anyway so there we go the end of an era. The end of the 80s. <laughs> the end of the 80s, folks. Uh, well, everyone, I hope you enjoy the commentary. Me and Brad will be back with a commentary to The Goonies in the next couple of weeks. Okay, everyone, take care and goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>